Well, you know you got a problem when you've got 600 amp hours of King's Lithium batteries sitting on the floor. Not really, this is actually Steve and Sarah's build. Quite happy to put this together for them. It's gonna be an absolutely awesome system when I'm done with it. Here we have a Renergy hub hook. It's called Renergy One. Now I was stuffing around with it before. I've just got a power supply hooked up to that DC-DC charger there. That's a 50 amp Renergy DC-DC charger. I've also got the Bluetooth module just plugged in at the moment and dummied up. And got some power running to this display, the Renergy One display. As you can see, it can recognize where the DC-DC charger is, which is really cool. Now, we are using a lot of Renergy things, a bit of King's things, but as you know, I am not brand snob by any means. Nothing wrong with the King's Lithium batteries, absolutely fine. I do like the Renergy 3000 watt inverter. I think they're a great unit. They're much quieter than the King's ones. I do admit that, but the King's ones have their place. Doesn't matter if they're loud, they still do their job. I've still got one running now for seven or eight months, almost non-stop. So I have no issues with the King's 3000 watt inverters either. Now we've got a Victron shunt here. It's a Bluetooth shunt. We've also got a 20 amp Renergy lithium charger here as well. So this bank can get charged up by that. This whole bank will be charged up by this as well. So this is the 50 amp DC-DC charger. Absolute weapon of a machine and it's all going into this giant toolbox we have here. And yes, I have this in my lounge room for that aircon. <laughs> I'm putting it all together today and hopefully I'll knock it over in a couple of days. I'm doing it in between jobs. Very happy to put it all together. This is my therapy. Okay, first things first, mounting these batteries in. I'm gonna put some L brackets painted black L brackets in there, strap them on the sides and then at the front as well so there's no movement side to side or back ways. Now these are going to be tied down with straps as well so there's no up and down movement. That's first thing getting done. Once the batteries are strapped in then we'll sort out positioning for all of this in there then after that we can continue with getting the wiring done. Now you've got an awesome fuse block here, the MIDI ones, I don't know if you guys are uh, familiar with them, but they're absolutely awesome fuse blocks. And we've got to go from the shunt to the rest of the gear. So first things first, let's get all this mounted in properly. So I've had something work out really well in my favor. So this, Combined with that, straps the battery down quite nicely. I have used the L brackets just simply because it's really hard to get in there for the other batteries and the L brackets on top stop the batteries from jumping. Obviously I can't screw into the battery, but for this battery here, each one tied down like that works out awesome. All right, I've just been doing a mock-up layout of everything at the moment and sorting out where everything is actually going. <laughs> so, the control panel is going to go up in this corner because there's plenty of space and there's still space for access to the power points on this side. Now, control panels are a pain in the neck to cut out. I've never found a good way to do it, so I always disconnect the back, mount the back, and then cut the front. 
see I can, as you can see, I marked it out. It's all ready to get drilled in each corner and then either die grinder or uh, angle grinder basically to cut out the holes that need to be done. Thanks for your help buddy. It's taken me nearly all day to get this cut out. I hate this part, cutting these out so I haven't set this in properly but cutting the holes out in control panels is just not my forte, I absolutely hate it. But this is going to look really neat once it's done. Alright, just starting to get some of this organised chaos sorted out. So at the moment most of the control panel is wired up and ready to rumble. The rest of it is going to be getting sorted out very soon. I'm going to come back once I've finished doing all the cabling and then I'll end up doing all the conduit and all that sort of stuff. But uh, for now I'm just going to buckle down and get it finished. <laughs> well here we have the finished setup. I've thrown all the leftover warranties and gear in that corner. So it's ready for some serious testing now. Um, I've done some quick and easy tests but uh, well and truly ready to put it under some pressure. I've made sure all of these are tensioned down good and now also Please keep in mind when you're hooking up a bunch of batteries in parallel, you always want them to be one positive in the middle of the bank and one negative in the middle of the bank, or one positive at the end of the bank and one negative at the other end of the bank, so that it charges and discharges as evenly as possible. Now, this is all 50 mil cable, well and truly, more than enough to handle what's going to be coming out of this system. You can go to 75 and you'll never ever have to worry about it, but it is so much harder to work with going to 75 mil cable. It's just not really necessary for this application. So from here, we've got the Renogy One, which is new to me. It's got switches on and off for loads. There's a whole bunch of switches in here as well that can be used, obviously with the King's control panel. Now I have swapped this Anderson plug to be the solar input as well. We've also got the DC, the DC DC alternator input from here um, and 12 volt accessories out of there. What we're mainly going to be doing though is heat testing. So I've got to check all these cables when it's under some serious load. So I might run the steamer plus the heat gun or the heater plus a heat gun and really load it up and see how many amps we can get out of it. Now I've already disconnected all the loads and zero current calibrated the Victron shunt. So it's registering exactly what's coming out of this system at all times. I do want to add a 300 amp isolate 12 volt isolator switch though just to turn off all the loads when it's not in use that way the batteries aren't using anything whatsoever obviously having a voltmeter having a dc dc charger and having this on all the time isn't much it's under an amp well and truly under an amp plus that little bluetooth you can see a little bluetooth dongle there as well it's under an amp, but it still will drain batteries down. We don't want that. We want to be able to turn it all off when we feel like it. Okay, we're going to do some serious stress testing. Now I've got the biggest load item I own, which is 2180 watts out of this steamer that I use for window tinting. If you guys are new to the channel, you'll understand that my business is actually window tinting. I only do this on the side.
help people out doing up their wiring and off-grid setups as well. The business is called Brisbane Prestige Tinting in Marumba Downs. So we've also got the heat gun which is what I use every single day as well. That's 2000 watts at full max draw. So as you can see the system at idle uses 0.0, .0 uh, 0.24 amps. Okay, let's turn this on. Straight off the bat, we've got the steamer pouring some power straight out, straight down to the steamer. It's basically like a kettle. It's 154 amps. Okay. Heat gun. Ooh, we're over 3,000 watts. <laughs> Still 12.8 volts. That's fantastic. 3,123 watts. 240 amps. I'm going to let this run for a while. I don't know if you can hear that. Put the microphone out. Fans have kicked on now. I'm very quiet in this thing. In comparison to the King's fans, these ones are very quiet. There we go, they ramp right up. A little stress test. Yep. It's gonna reset. Back on again. Turn the heat gun up slowly. Leave it around there. Cables are vibrating, but they're not even warm. They're about room temperature. The shunt is a bit warm. The shunt itself. So all that power has to run through it and be measured. And even this hard corner cable, a little bit warm, but seems like 50 mil cable at 3000 watts is the way to go. The fans have ramped up again. Consistent draw. I dare say, once we get to 90%, that's a good stress test. <laughs> Turned it up a little bit more. 3,300 watts, no worries. 90%. I think that's a damn good stress test for this system. I'm very, very happy with that. So I spun the extension lead around and plugged it into power. That 240 volt Renergy charger pushing in 20 amps so that won't take too long to top back up. Probably two hours at 42 amp hours. Okay, we've got 18 amps going in. 3 the DC DC charger. 
but this isn't registering it through the Bluetooth on the DC DC charger, so I've got to figure out what's going on there. Sorry, it's decided to wake up. <laughs> it's registering 252 watts, 18.82 amps. That's good. It's working up. It knows what's going on. It must be a bit of a delay through Bluetooth. As you can see, I'm running an Anderson plug straight outside. So these panels currently are off the system that runs my garage. That's in another video. I'll insert some clips of that. First official big test for the system and I've already found one wire that's getting a little bit warmer than I would like. It does have a bit of a kink in it so I might change that wire tomorrow. See how we go but it's running the dryer no problems and that fridge. So running the dryer we've drawn 277 amp hours plus the standby power overnight. We've got that battery charger running at the moment so we've got 31 amps in plus whatever's coming in from the solar so should charge up pretty quickly I'd say. Currently smashing that current back in so we know the DC DC charger is working so I've been a little bit busy putting the isolator switch in and extra Anderson plugs with some 16mm cable coming out of them, one for solar, one for the DC-DC alternator charge. Done some testing, turned this back on so now everything can be isolated and the shunt is the only thing that's on all the time. Dad, you talk forever. <laughs> what are you going to do, get me?